Folks, this is awesome. We have right now teaching people how to pay their kids and get tax deductions. We're about to break out into a Velocity banking class in just a little bit. We're also going to be strategizing with the famous Pamela McCants. She's going to be awesome. We have John here. Uh, that's that's amazing. So he's first, of course. All right. Yeah, and, and, and I'll be here uh, with the amazing Pamela McCants, but she won't be here because she'll be somewhere else. This is CJ. <laughs> Thank you. And he's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, man, we have an action-packed night for you we're going to be going to three different places okay first place is going to be here next place is going to be there and the other place is going to be over there all right here there and over there three places watch this all right we're starting now so go ahead and ask your questions if you got questions we'll answer them fire all right everybody welcome out to thursday night Woo! And uh, tonight, we have one of my good buddies back in the house from all the way from the Biltmore of Phoenix area. Him and his beautiful wife, Pamela, and, well, no, it's just John and Pamela in the camps. Everybody say hi to them. Hey, everybody. Hi. 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 Hey. So, tonight, what we are going to be doing is exciting world adventure of real estate investing. Who came here for wanting to expand their real estate knowledge? Who wants to get into real estate investing? Who wants to own a bunch of real estate if you don't own a bunch of real estate? Yes. That's what we're here for. That's what I'm here for every single week. And so I figure if I want to do it, I might as well hang around with everybody else that's doing it, right? Hey, essentially. So that's the best way to do it. So tonight, there's a What state do you call it from? If this is your Tune first in time here, you get to hang out with us in this room. This is the fun room. This is where you get to not do so much hard labor and work. That's what's going to be taking place over in the other areas. Now, one of those other areas is something that is... New York is in the house. But I'm not even going to tell you what it is yet. I'm going to let Mr. Joseph Smith tell you about it because he's the guy that's going to be leading us. So let me tell you a little bit about this guy before he comes up. This man won a Super Bowl. Look at his ring. Guy. He's the guy that specializes in finding money. And he had to do that because he has a nice financial track record of winning the lottery, where he was blessed with two foreclosures in a bankruptcy right after the crash. Blessed. Blessed. And then uh, Love the lottery was he credentials. Not the actual real lottery. But um, when you're in that situation, you think you got to get creative? Yeah, he just hit his... Uh, Threshold of one point two five million dollars of retirement fund. How about that? And he puts that all into real estate. So this is a guy you could definitely learn some financial strategies from. Oh, so I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna Oh, let me go ahead and bring him up. Enough about him. I mean I can go on about him for days. But oh, I'm I'm amazing. Him. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. amazing outer space. That's right. Well you guys in here you'll be working with Ray. Ray's a fun guy, but uh but I'm more fun. <laughs> so, he takes three things. Okay, here's three things that you need. First, you need debt. Who in the room has debt? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yes. Right. And the rest of you who didn't raise your hand, you're just lying. All right. <laughs> Second of all, you need income. All right. So most people have some kind of income fixed or you're working. But the third thing is you need a line of credit or a credit card. So we're going to show you how to, you know, Mix that all up, and out comes being debt free and having cash flow to Beautiful. fulfill your dreams, Beautiful. solve world hunger, achieve world peace. You can do it. Right? That's all going to happen when we learn about velocity banking. We're going to be taking very expensive interest and paying it off with very inexpensive interest. Super exciting. Who's joining me tonight? Who are my guys? One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. So rise up.
Let us go out to the conference room and we're going to get started. Broadening the line. But remember, if it's your first nice. time, you're staying in here. Nice. First time, folks, stay here. So he's going to the Velocity Banking class. We'll be all joined him shortly. Okay? Shortly. So, because you did not bring your bowls with you. Yes. So, that's kind of like a homework thing. You have to bring your bowls. Salad bowls, steel, stainless steel works best. Seriously, because what's in place over there? You literally have brain matter oozing out of the <laughs> She does it all. A million dollar flip team place. Um, yeah, the track record expands basically for the last, what, 30, 20, 30 years of business ownership? Yeah, over 30 years. Over 30 years of business ownership. Nice. It's very, very awesome. successful. So tonight, she is going to be helping our team members go through the first half of a training that we call creative acquisitions. Is that correct? No. Deal of the decade. Deal of the decade. I knew it was deal of the decade. Deal of the decade. She started when she was four years old. Very creatively. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of deals right now that are sitting at the courthouse of the bank system. We can't get to those houses and those deals unless we know how to go through the probate system and pull them out of so that is what they're learning right now, is how to actually go and source these projects, the deals, from the courthouse. Is that valuable information? Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, perfect. So if you, oh, oh, oh I shouldn't let you talk. No, he's fine. Why don't you stand up at least we can say hi. <laughs> yes. All right, everybody say hi to Pamela McKenzie. That's another class that we are going to be going to. It's going to be awesome. Okay. Have fun. All right. That's bad. He's amazing. Thank you, Amazing man. Awesome. People have just signed up for uh, the real estate investing. They just want to know more, right? About how to move your money the correct way. That's all. On the other half. The better. And obviously, we all know that our lives are what keeps us grounded. I'm the other third. Yes. We're too crazy without women in our lives. And then, so. Hey, is this, is this Sony? Hey, Sony. Is, uh, we got a treat for you. Okay. Real estate for about 28 years now. Specializing in. I'm going to get closer here so you can hear her. Okay. Get out of bad situations. Also, it's really. Hey, I sent you a link to get more information. And that's somebody that I have really gotten uh, a lot of wisdom from this person to go buy things without losing money. Because that's the tricky part, especially if you're buying them blind at the auction. How do you mitigate that risk? So, this is what John really brings to the table, his specialty in that. And we're going to be learning all about what you have to share with us tonight on how to be successful in real estate. So, everybody give it up for Mr. John McCann. Oh. Right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, excellent, right? That was the presentation for the other. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Thank you, John. 
Thank you, guys. Well, what you saw tonight already is kind of like we call it the horsepower for this room. What I'm going to talk to you about is some of the fuel that's behind it. And um, we're a real estate investor for 28 years. Let me, when I'm let me just explain. I got freedom. I type freedom out of it. I want to explain what's going on here, okay? We're going to be taking you to three different places. Okay? This is John McCants, our practitioner instructor. Uh, you can't be a practitioner instructor unless you've made uh, over a million dollars um, in what you do. So his is auctions. We have people that do this, fix and flips, uh, notes. Okay, that's Jeff Armstrong. Uh, you're going to meet him too, all right? Um, but right now, we're going to be listening to John McCants. We're also going to be listening to Joseph Smith, Velocity Baking Strategist, as well as Pamela McCants, John's wife. And she's going to be going over creative acquisitions. All right. So listen to John for just a little bit. And we're actually going to be breaking. We're going to another class. And then we'll break again and go to the other class. All right. All right. So listen to him. So that's really what I'm going to talk about. And so you guys can ask me questions. You'll learn a little bit about me in the process. And I'd like to ask you guys a few questions. Here's what we really truly are doing. There's no credit card machines. There's none, none of that here. We can all go to classes, seminars. There is information. There is education. That's what these guys have invested in. But it's their time more than their money is going to happen. What are you going for? We're doing? You've got choices out there how to learn this. YouTube, bigger pockets, go to the classes. I went to a $6,300 seminar believe what I was hearing five days and said, you know what, I can't go back to my job the next day. I had to quit. Okay, because that kind of stuff can happen. So just going to be real with you. I'm not going to waste your time. Let me get straight to the point. We're looking for you guys. We want to train up more people. We want to bring in contractors. Uh, we want to bring in real estate agents, professionals. Last night up in Phoenix with the group, because that's where I'm from. Uh, you know, I had to do a presentation for the very first time in front of like 75 people really growing and, and just get crazy up there. But I'm one of the teachers that goes back and does that every week. Okay. But our leader was down in Panama celebrating having some fun. So I got up and, and explained it to him. Bottom line, there's some people that want to get in this game big time up in Phoenix. There's a lot of people looking at it. It's like, you guys have a better market down here probably than we do with it, or less competition, it's hard to say. But um, so we're looking for you. But we also know that you, like me, I was looking for a group. I was looking for the information. You're looking for us. So we just want to show you who we are, what we're doing options out there for you okay so let's just go this is a plan that we've been executing as a group for the last nine nine years okay i've been doing it since 1990 not quite like this because the first 17 and a half 18 years i did it all on my own the last 10 years i've been doing it with the group but i'll explain to you what's happened to my members we have members that come in here and decide to say you know what i want to hang my hat around people that are doing it I'll just say this, I was up with Tony Robbins, who knows Tony Robbins? And you know, I don't know if I've ever in the States called him Sir, Tony Robbins, Sir, and they're like, who's the guy, Sir Richard Branson, now it's his name? He hangs around some really wealthy people. It's like what? Well, we went earlier in the year of March to the LA Convention Center, he went through his ultimate power train, for 750 bucks for five days, 15,000 people in the LA Convention Center, it was unreal. Okay. Well, from there, some, some people decided to go to his business mastery. We did. We signed right up. I am kind of a seminar junkie. I would go to the back of the room and sign up. I did go to the back of the room and sign up for stuff when I started this, and I did it in March. And it was 15 grand to go spend five days with Tony Robbins and a bunch of millionaires. And believe it or not, for the first time in my life that I'm aware of it, with billionaires in the room, multi-billionaires sitting in the front row for five days listening to this dude. He's a personal development trainer. He's a business Whatever, it's going to be 50, 100, 150 people in the world as far as billionaires. He's just that. Well. And it's funny watching him. He, he kind of shows you how he went along, went along. He's been doing this now for 42 years. I've been around him enough now, I know some of his stats. But in the last three or four years, he's gone from making multi millions. For the first time, the last four years, he made a billion dollars a year. So it's taken that long, but boom, it's like, you know, they're in the room now talking with the T word, right? Trillions. Crazy stuff, just crazy stuff. And technology is moving so fast, and we, we have to watch how we keep up. We're not keeping up. Okay, for Hina, here I go. It's kind of funny when I get up and teach, do a presentation, I start teaching on stuff. <laughs> you guys remember what was before the cell phone? Or not the cell phone, the iPhone? What was it called? Blackberry? Oh, Blackberry. Right, remember that? 2000, this is how things are going. 
called a crack bird, right? People were getting tendonitis, whatever, with the little button and the <laughs> crack, and then they had a flip phone, right? That was kind of somewhere around that time. Do you realize it's been only 10 years since we've gone to a point of not having a computer in our hand and now almost completely relying on a computer? And what do we do almost every year or every other year? We upgrade our phone. We're moving that fast. Now they're talking about artificial intelligence, AI. I didn't know what was AI. I've been hearing it the last six months. It's artificial intelligence, robotics, an interactive robot. It's not the kind that's in Star Wars, R2D2, but stuff that really actually can do more than going in the room and realize it's touching stuff, you know, the robot, and end up back in its docking bay when it gets low on power and it can power back up and do it. It's interactive CO2 out of the air so that we can save our planet. And since the beginning of time that they've been able to track, I don't know how they can go back to the year zero when Jesus was here all that, at that time and say, you know, we, we were at 0.03 then. I don't know how they did track it, but that's what they said, you know, as far as carbon percentage up there. Well, in the last 30 years, we've gone from 0.03 to 0.04 of the CO2 in the air. It's finally started to move. And that's quite a significant change. And what happens is like Tony's well, our CO2 problem. We have to save our planet. We got to get on it now. There's guys in the room that are spending spending billions of dollars learning how to do that. We're here today just to talk about doing some real estate, <laughs> getting into some stuff so we can go out and have our time back and get credit, not maybe so much on our social security number, but maybe on our business, you know, and do some things that really actually will rock this world. So, purpose tonight is to show you what's possible. It's also to inform you what we do and how we do it, how you can join us. The members have left the room. You know, we have a small crowd tonight. We had 50 a couple weeks ago. It's vacation time, school's going on, things are happening. We want you to come here if you're a member as much as you humanly can. We can make it four out of five, you know, times or 80 to 90% of the time. Some of us make it every single time. I can't make it every week. I make it just about every week. For the meetings that I go to, I missed the last week. I'll miss one in September. I won't miss one in October. I'll be here and it's Phoenix doing the group studying, applying what we're learning, and everyone's wanting to be up here doing this. Not to be asked to buy anything, purchase stuff, obviously we're going to show you what it is, want you to check it out. The whole idea is we want you to come back and learn from Joseph some of the strategies, get a training from him. That's a workshop he's taking you through, really. It's not a training, it's a workshop on how to get out of debt. Because once it gets, you get yourself personally out of debt and get some money freed up, start doing some real estate, wouldn't it be kind of cool to get into real estate investments? and have an idea of how to get out of debt on those two and use the houses as banks for the more houses. That's the strategy that it rolls to for what he's doing there, the higher level, okay? Uh, and we're gonna be invited back. So we'll get you more info. The member that asked you to hear and get you more details. I'm gonna put parts of this. And if you guys, hey, John, slow down and give me, you know, take the fire hose and dial it back a little bit, I will. But there's a lot of data here. We just wanna show you who we are, to get a feeling for who and what this is. And if you're looking for us, Check out a few of the competition, go to EZ Ria, go to the other places, go to one of the football houses, you know, uh, Fortune Steelers or Fortune Builders, whatever they're called, all that kind of stuff. I did, and it worked, but very few of us actually make it work in the system. It's called the seminar system. We're not that, okay? We're something different. We're using technology. We're ahead of that curve. Okay, so now what's going on, and I don't think this is the pointer, but I think this one, you know, is one of these a pointer, or is this the pointer? Uh, on the top. That one. Okay. Right. Tonight, uh, you're in with us in a team overview. As people come in, we have an orientation so we can get to understand how the operation works here. Uh, Pam took people out to the essentials. We are growing into a fix and flip mastermind, a multi family mastermind, learning how to be the bank. And the most popular thing you want to right now is nightly or short term rentals. Taking houses that you normally rent for $1,500, $2,000 a month and doing that times in a week. Let's see how I'm going to step up in Phoenix right now. Renting a house per month, on average, about $6,500 a month. Because he's renting it by the weekend, by the day, or by the week. Same thing going on in Oceanside, California. I saw him on Tuesday night. Unreal. He lives in the little granny flat in front, rents the house out behind him. Last month, he bought in in July, $7,500 renting out his house. What's going on, Jesus? He sees stuff. Um, Joseph is off with Velocity Bank. Okay. Showing you how to turn the bank around from the harsh interest to simple interest and getting that money back in your pocket so that you can actually start leveraging your real estate. So on Saturdays, we have tours of our properties, we have workshops ourselves, and intensive training. So these are the things that are, we are doing, 
and we are growing. So in do you mean yours? Yes, this is not, this is the mother's at this is what time on which one of the events. Oh, yeah, we will, at the end, all meet at different times. At the end, we will see what's going oh. on for this week. It okay. changes, okay. Cindy, every week. But right now, at 7 o'clock, every week, we're doing this mm -hmm. and this. And where you're at with me right now. And the folks come on, we put them through an orientation, 7 and up. Mm -hmm. And then we have different things. We'll announce what's going on this week coming up. Okay. Great question. That's perfect. That's what it's an interactive thing, right? So, as for Pam is, the next week, what we can do, Ray, is show this when Pam goes out. Yes. And they are doing, uh, where are they at? Deal of the Decade. Deal of the Decade. <laughs> they're going through that class. Half of it they're reviewing this week, and half of it they're reviewing this week. In between, hint, hint, here and next week, they are going to be doing what we call in school homework. Here we call it field work. We're <laughs> applying the information that they're learning and doing it themselves, getting them to feel what it's like. They either get a win, or we call it a learning experience. You know, and you could call it something other than a learning experience, but learning. And then oftentimes some people don't do it at the same level or in the same way. You might learn and get that experience from somebody else and they're always like, man, I didn't think about it that way. I could have done that. So the whole idea of mastermind is collectively trying to figure out a situation or solve a problem. You may not figure it out on your own, but someone else might, or they may add to what you just did. And together, everyone achieves more. That's the way to do it, right? So that's where Pam's at. That masterminds are for our members only. Here's the I was throwing. I used to do some of this on a whiteboard. We're going to be so doing a lot, something a long different. Time, and I don't write so well. Um, so we're going to go this route. Entrepreneurship. This is what we really are. We visualize and we actualize things. That's what's going on next door. We think, you know, can I get out of debt? How can I do it? Let's actualize that. You know, so we're self starters. We see more of it than others do and see it before others do. To me, being first is more important than being fast. Uh, you know, and uh, but first sets, you know, a person apart. And uh, we work harder than others. Honestly, I quit my eight hour a day job to have a 12 to 16 hour a day job. Who signed for, wants to sign for that? Okay. So if you the eight hour job, entrepreneurs work harder than we do at our day job. So just to give you a hint, if that doesn't, you don't like that, it might be a good time to go out to Danny's right now and have dinner. Because we're talking about working harder at times and playing harder, taking weeks off, months off. I'll show you. 42, we took 42 days, days off last year. And while we took 42 days off, all the stuff that's going on in my life financially made me more money than it cost me to be in Europe for 42 days. Is that any question? No. Just it's not work when you love it. Mm -hmm. really no, no. no it's cool. not okay, beautiful? So, uh, you're going to get to know who I am in the process. We're going to help. At the same time, we're relevant to study it. And if you're going to do this stuff, we're going to do it. You're going to skin your knees, so are we. We just don't want to break our legs. Um, uh, we keep scoring. I like to win. This is just kind of bad. Anybody else have an idea of what an entrepreneur is? Or a thought, a word, a sentence? What would you call it? Yes, you know what I mean? It's essentially what's there. It's either it's using opportunity, uh, a bigger problem. Anybody else? Opportunity creator? Opportunity Is that creator. what you just said? Okay. I don't know. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about that. Say, I told you. The set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. So I just like to look at this. You know, we're here to talk about opportunity. Everything I've talked about is rosy, red, optimistic, and positive, right? Other than possibly selling your house during a downturn. It's not fair to talk just about that. On the other side of it, there's something that may not be working as well. 90 plus percent of the people in America aren't financially where they thought they would be at this point in their life. Most people aren't doing it. Most people aren't doing real estate. We are looking for every one of you, but usually one or two or three will join us. It's just people don't do it, they don't follow through. We can't help that, but we want the ones that want to do it. Okay, so it's not fair for me to say, let's just talk all about perfect. That's what I bought. I bought a seminar after five days. There's no way I could not do that. I sat for three hours, $69 a night. So this is a great, his name was Robert Allen at the time. Wrote a book called Nothing Down. And by the time they were done showing me all the deals, because they just showed me the back end. They didn't teach what Pam is showing, what she is teaching, the essentials, the basics of this. If I had learned that, I would have gotten here faster than I even did. But at the end of the night, I signed up for their $6,300 program because there's no way that I could not do that. But what is positive or an opportunity? We need to talk about it. So opportunity, all right, these slides are, is this one. Favorable circumstances, you kind of said that. Season opportunity, but the synonym of that is a golden opportunity, favorable time or moment, the right set of circumstances. That's opportunity. 
I didn't know what an antonym was when I saw it you know, on the internet, on my phone. It's a threat, adversity, no opportunity. All right? So opportunity is forward thinking, future, goal opportunity. But we're going to... Okay, I'm just going to tune in as to what's going on right now. Okay, uh, we are almost at the end of this presentation. What I'm going to do in about five minutes is go towards the Velocity Banking class that's going on. Okay, uh, it's a class that I'm going on. So after the Velocity Banking class, we're going to another class to show you where I get where I get the knowledge from, right? So just let me know, okay? Hold on. With everyone end up you know. Spending a third of our money for our living expenses, a third in interest. Joseph's going to show those folks out of there, take that away, and evaporate that in a fraction of the time that we normally do. And a third of our time we're paying our stuff in taxes. I pay, I make hundreds of thousands of dollars, make six figures or more, I'm bragging, that's what I mean. And I pay less than my house. Okay? <laughs> I know. I was going to say, wow. You said that? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> down in the car with me. <laughs> I wake up in the middle of the night talking and go, wow. I think we're going to be good stuff. But here is where we're going to, let's look at reality. Okay. This is a snapshot of where the other side is, the currently side, the uncertainty side. Only one child out of a hundred in America that is born, it turns 65 right now as well. I was in a room with 2,500 people in LA or in Las Vegas with Tony, and I know that there was more than one out of 100 in that room. Flat out blown away. 54% of us are dependent on something else other than ourselves, social security, family, church, friends, whatever. You know, whatever it is. 36% are working, okay? And this is what we'll talk about a little <laughs> bit here. This number, 4% statistically, by the government standards, are what they call financially independent. So I asked the crowd in Phoenix last night, my first time doing this, what that number would be. What number per year would you feel you'd have to make to be financially independent in Tucson? Over 100. Over 100. Okay, that was good. That's what Phoenix said. Anybody else? It's like your taxes, when you take your taxes and send them out to the tax preparer, or two or three or four or five, you're going to get a different number back from each and every one of them. Same thing with this staff. You're going to get a different number back. Uh, one guy, and his name was James, since John Dolls are related to his financially independent means at the end of the month, at the end of the year, you have more money left over than you spend. You have enough money that you actually can pay your bills. You can cover the nut. Okay? So what we're going to focus on is this. That's the opportunity. You can be dependent, you can still be working. Who wants that? You know, let's go out and have some fun and do some things with our life. So here's a breakdown of what that 1% looks like. 75% nearly of those people in Hawaii own a business and have real estate. You've all heard this, we're already having it, you're gonna hear it now. McDonald's is about real estate, they're not about hamburgers. They own street corn. What do you think the income up of the police for the managers? And all that is for McDonald's and all those street corners in America. Yeah, they make money on the hamburgers, but they make money on the real estate. So that is huge. And you look around, there's a few people that are great, gone to college, six to eight to ten years, whatever it takes to do that. And some people have climbed the corporate ladder. Who has confidence in that one these days? It's a toughie, you know? I mean, it's a really tough one. You know, it's hard to 
government. Our country is awesome. Everybody wants to be here. Obviously, because they're trying to get here in many, many, many different ways. But not too many people are making it the old fashioned way. Times have changed. If you're going to become a CEO or president, you either got there because someone knew you. In my opinion, you had family, you had some buy in, or your company was bought by another company and you worked your way up. But you don't do it the old fashioned way. You don't work your way from the mail room to the board. And if you do, then you are one of them. And uh, so, and then there's super salespeople. There are some people out there that are really good at sales and make it and, and stay in that business. The average real estate agent is not in business as a real estate agent any longer than about three to five years, depending on the statistics. So they just don't make it. But the ones that make it past that five year mark use your earn for a long period of time. Which is not a bad thing. Fair enough. So, this is what we want to go. This is what we're looking at. The one percent as a political slogan, right? That's part of the administrations for a few years or decades. Folks, like I promised you, we're going, all right? This is what we do. They've already broken out for classes, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the door instead of push it. What's up, everybody? <laughs> so we're going to go. What do you guys want to see first as we go over there? What do you, what do you want to see? You want to see Velocity Banking? Or do you want to see creative acquisitions where the lovely Pamela McCants goes over how to creatively get a deal? She makes getting real estate investing very easy. And when you know, right, just like anything else, guys, just like anything else, when you know more, you can do more, right? So what is it that you guys want to see first? You want to see velocity banking class? Or, or do you want to see Right? Do you want to see creative acquisitions? Creative acquisitions. <clears throat> Let me give you an example of creative acquisitions, okay? I uh, did this fix and flip, I think it was two years ago, right? And on the fix and flip, it was uh, it was a dude that was very distressed. He wanted to see, his, what's going on, Juan? You want to see Velocity? Okay, all right, hey, I'm going to give it to you, man. I'm going to give it to you. I just want to uh, cover this maybe for two minutes. Creative acquisitions, man. I got the fix and flip. The guy said, hey, man, I really want to get out of this house, right? Velocity, Sonia, uh, uh, Sony, all uh, right, I will, I will, I will right now. As a matter of fact, I'll cut it short right now. We'll go up in there. But I just wanted to let you know that um, basically all in all, what you're looking for in real estate investing are distressed sellers, right? Distressed. You know, his wife had just passed away. He wanted to be with his kids in Phoenix. You know, we knocked on his door. We helped him out some seller financing, okay? He said, this deal works for me. We got the fix and flip, okay? Got it for like 77, 78, sold it for like 140 something. We can teach you how to do all of that, right? Uh, but that's basically what you're looking for in real estate investing. Let's get into Velocity Banking right now, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. We are in the building, very thankful for the folks over here at 3131 Country Club up here in Tucson, T-Town. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are in the right place, right? I believe this is where Pamela is. Okay, so that's creative acquisitions over there. We want to go to Velocity Banking right now. So in Velocity Banking, I know you guys have questions. What are the questions, right? What are the questions that you have right now? on Velocity Banking. Um, and I guess you could say uh, all of it, right? However, always remember this. Velocity Banking is about, what is it about? It's about making sure all those loans, okay, the amortized loans, as a matter of fact, since there's a contrast between amortized interest and simple interest, I just say complex interest is amortized interest, okay? Uh, those amortized loans that you have. It's about paying down those loans with simple interest, okay, with your line of credit, okay? Let's go ahead and get to it. Thank you, 
so much. Appreciate it. Very nice lady. Man, this building is so... There you go. Can I use other people's money with Velocity Banking? Folks, that's what it's all about, right? That's how you build wealth is with other people's money. Can I ask you a question? I'm sorry for the hugeness of this place, okay? <laughs> but we're going to get to it, all right? But what do banks do? They make money with what? Other people's money, right? So um, just to let you know, that's, that's uh, how wealth is built. Not with your own hard-earned money, even though you can do it, right? Um, you can actually do it with your hard-earned money, but there are other people that need their money to increase as well. Just like a private lender, right, that I had. Hey, he needed, he needed his money to grow, and so that's exactly what we did. We grew his money uh, on the fix and flip that we accomplished. So, and we just keep on doing it, right? Over and over and over again. It's like, we're for people who are developing businesses. What? What the is Joseph? Is it the corner one? Oh, okay. They're both in there. He's just in the back. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, he's doing fine. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. All right. <laughs> What's going on, JC? Hey, did you did you hear his story? It was amazing, man. So this guy, you know, he's he's getting, you know what I mean? Hey, I know a lady by the name of Mary down there in Atlanta, Georgia. She said, listen, I'm a landscaper and I'm 73 years old and I want to leave an inheritance for all my children. I said, look at that. My goodness. This woman is going to make it by sheer determination. All right, so let's get in here right now. It's room 205, so let's get in here. But, um, now, how long are you going to film? Because we're kind of like not at a normal Oh, no, it's okay. I'm just going to the <laughs> see that? See that power? Power. <laughs> okay, folks. Here it is, okay? This is Velocity Banking. So let me go ahead and... Credit Wiz at InvestorPro.org. Longs, Texas. Longs, TX. Credit Wiz at InvestorPro.org. So here it is. bottom line. I, if I put $100 into a bank account a year ago, what's it worth today in today's money? It's worth $97. Inflation is I lost 3% due to the cost of goods going up and the deflation of my dollar. So I did nothing. I just left $100 in the account. And now I have 97 Now, but that's okay because the bank is giving me 1%. Right? <laughs> one, zero, one, per zero, zero, one. No, no, no. This is 1%. This would be 1%. Right? So that's good, right? Wait. Is that keeping up with inflation? No. Oh, wait. A so you're saying 
they're giving you, you're losing nice. It's, it's I get 98. 98. Yeah. Hey, it's not losing it as fast. Right. <laughs> God bless you. So, think about this. If you had a billion dollars, would you want to put it into the bank in a savings account? You could get 1% return on that. 1% of billion is a billion dollars is a heck of a lot of money. It's millions of dollars. But you're losing three for So, are you telling me that no billionaire would knowingly invest in something that they know loses their money before they even put the money in? They already know that it loses money. Now, are we, as Americans, the nine, so that's the 1% wealthy. Let's talk about this 99. Are, we're not any less smart than the wealthy 1%. We know that savings accounts don't pay for anything. We've heard of that term inflation. But by show of hands, who has a savings account? Oh, some of you who aren't saying, like, I don't want to say I'm a for Joe. I don't have money in the savings account. I mean, but, but a lot of people have savings accounts, do they not? Yes, they do. And we feel good about having a savings account. Why? Why do we put bit of a savings account? Why would we put money in this? The bank says it's a good thing. Well, right, because you're saving up in case of a what? Emergency. Emergency. It's your rainy day fund. Right? That's what people want. you got to have that, that little buffer in case something happens, right? That's responsible, isn't it? <laughs> so, but they call it a savings account so you feel good about yourself. But that's not and they're, it's actually called the bank's lending pool. It's the money that the bank uses to go out and make money. So, let's say, I'm sorry, what's your name? Did you say Nicole? Nicole. Let's say you've saved up for many years now. You've got $10,000 sitting in the bank. That's awesome. It's phenomenal. Now, when you save up that money, um, you're thinking, okay, that's for a rainy day. And then all of a sudden the day comes and you need to get a car. Out of the savings account to buy yourself a car. But now you don't have what? If you do that, you don't have your cushion. So you have to weigh the thought do I do that or do I go get myself a little auto loan, right? What's the bank going to do? Is the bank going to say use your savings account or are they going to say, I want you to an auto loan, right? You're like trade in value, carry back uh, $13,000. Right? Maybe you got that at 2%. Maybe you got it at 6%. But the point is, they pushed you into a loan. Right? With your cushion. Now, what really happened? Here's what really happened. If you have put money on the bank, I have your $10,000. I'm giving you 1% back. Now, you say you need to borrow some money. I'm going to take your money and just give it back to you that charge you 6%. It's your money that I'm lending to you, and I'm charging you to use your own money. Do we all understand that that's what we're actually doing with the bank? Those of us with savings accounts with any kind of balance in there, that's like not really that smart, that's even more. Because think about inflation. If the bank's lending you money at 6%, they stand ahead of the inflation curve, right? But they're but they're paying you one percent. So who wins? Who loses? The bank wins, but you have a car that's going to break down at some point, and then you're going to put on a credit card. And so you're going to make six over here, twenty-one over there. They're good. They're good. You see how the bank model? They win no matter what you choose. I, that, that's this is this is the reality of how things are working. So we got we got our loans, we got our lines of credit, we got and so what about so we know that the bank, the lending pool, we just give the bank money and they go make money off us. I mean who here would sign up today and think that hey, look we have a lending pool. If you want to just put money in this account for us to go make money, right? <laughs> We'll, we'll give you 1% return on that. How many people would be would take that? Do you see how some way brilliantly, 
the marketing system is like, no one's going to want to put money in the bank's lending pool. No one's going to, but if you say, put it in your savings account, now you feel good about yourself. You're being responsible. Okay. So, again, I'm trying to open your mind. A lot of this is laying the groundwork because you need to know how the banks are operating, what they're thinking. Uh, but also, since the uh, government threw in 401ks and IRAs and things like that, which is not the bank. But let's think about that just for a minute. If I have money that set, goes every paycheck off to my 401k, whatever that is, Merrill Lynch, whoever, where does that money ultimately go? It leaves my paycheck and it goes where? Where does it end up? It travels to some magical place where? Into a big pool of money. But it actually physically goes to an actual location somewhere in this country. It starts with a W and ends with Wall Street. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you guessed it. New York Stock. Yes. So you put money there, right? And there's some mutual fund or there's something that you're invested in, right? So this money flies off to Wall Street, right? Goes to some broker, some account manager, hedge fund, somebody. They take your money, and then they go to the casino, I mean the, the stock market, and they start betting on futures and things like that of different companies and currencies and all kinds of things. And then they make money. But it's so much fun to go gambling with somebody else's money, right? Because in the bottom line, if they win or lose, they still get paid for the transaction. Yes. Now there are some incentives, right? Sometimes I step on toes of people like, hey, I'm a broker, it's fine. If you can make money doing that and you know what you're doing, I, that's a great way to make money. So there are sound ways to invest. But my point is, you're giving a large chunk of money to somebody off in Wall Street, and you're telling them, go make money with my money, but please try and give me back some. What's the average annual rate of return on a 401k or IRA. If we take if we, if we average the whole nation out. Seven percent? Six? You wish <laughs> one to three percent. Right. Now, are there people making eight percent returns? Sure. They know what they're doing. The app on their phone, you've seen them at the coffee houses, right? Yeah. So if the more active Learn, get educated, you can you can really make money and stuff like this. But your average person, set it and forget it, right? What happened in 2008 with 401ks? Like, remember they became 101ks overnight? Is <laughs> that like that? <laughs> let me ask you something. This is your money we're talking about, right? Who, let me ask you, who is more motivated to make sure that your money is there to buy the best day, college fund for kids, who is more apt to make better decisions about how to invest your money? You or some broker in Wall Street? You. Some hedge fund. Who, who is more invested in your individual you success? Are, you, are. you are always going to be more invested. So you should always take an active role right. in learning how to invest your own money. So this is what the average yeah, so it's 5,000 in, 5,000 out. Maybe these numbers don't match yours. Exactly. But maybe you, you don't have a 401k IRA. You're not putting anything to savings. Maybe you have 20 kids, right? And so all of that money is over here in the lifestyle. I mean, it could be maybe you don't have all, all the cars. But wherever it is, this is representative of the payments that have to be made. Are you agree? Picking up and I'm laying down? All right. So, Kristen, where was my great marker? Oh, you said. I need a great marker. Can we go back? Would you get a green marker? Green marker? Wait a minute. Maybe I have one in my bag. Oh, would you go get my bag? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. But until then, let's go back in time to eighth grade earth science. Anybody remember eighth grade earth science? Maybe. You're talking about like earthworms and stuff? Yeah. Okay. All right, well, let's go. 
Let me put you in the scenario. Okay. So if you got the, if, if your car needed fixed, eight thousand dollars, and you need the money like yesterday, there's no time to go to the title loan. You got to get this fixed now. Now let's say there just happens to be this really attractive, good-looking guy who's nice, kind. His name's Joseph Smith. He's got the money and he'll lend it to you. All right, Chris. This is you were talking about. You need the money. We just asked me if I'm a nice guy. Guy. Absolutely, I'm the nice guy. In fact, I'm going to lend you the eight thousand dollars, and I'll let, I'll let you pick. Do you want to pay me back six percent interest or twenty? You pick. Rather than six. What? Rather than six. Yeah. Why not? He wasn't dumb the day they taught math in school, right? Yeah. See, everybody makes that choice because that's what we know. We know that it, instinctively we want to pay less, right? We don't want to pay more. We want to pay less. Okay. So. Thank you for participating. Everybody would have picked the same thing. I picked the same thing. So I, I don't want to pay. I don't want to pay a lot of money. So fresh water at sea level freezes at zero degrees Celsius. True or false? Yes. I'm not trying to trick you. Eighth grader in science, we learned. Fresh water at sea level free freezes at zero degrees Celsius. True or false? You got to participate. Yeah. True. Probably say true, I guess, everybody else is. Yep, because <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to trick you guys. No, that's true. All right, I'm serious. I'll let you know if I try to trick you. Fresh water at sea level also freezes. Thank you. Fresh water at sea level freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. True or false? True. See, I'm not trying to trick you. Okay, still not trying to trick you. But if I change this to 1 degree Celsius, right? Follow me? One degree Celsius, which temperature is hotter? One degree Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit? One degree Celsius. That's hotter? Yes. Yes. Not trying. Now, I am going to try and trick you. Pay attention. I'm going to change it one more time. Let's change this to 6 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to change this one to 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Which temperature is hotter? Which temperature is hotter? Six are you sure? I'm trying to trick you. I am. You are sure. You are sure. You're sure? Sure. But Doug, it's a six. It's true. It's a twenty-one. Yes. Why why is the you're six? Going, you're going colder over here. Uh-huh. And you're going hotter over here. That's true. But still, that's a six. Just because it's a six doesn't mean Two different scales. Yes. Hey, did you know that the bank is doing the same thing here with us on these interest rates? Did you know they're pulling the same kind of little show you? This over here is called amortized. This is amortized interest, and the loan is one direction. Now, over here, this is 21%. This is simple interest, and it's revolving. About the different types of zeros, but let's talk about zeros here. So let's go back to my home loan. Every month, where did it go? To the bank. Okay, next month, $1,200. Where did it go? To the bank. Now, the air conditioning stops working. It's just blowing hot air. Call out the cooler guy. He says, oh, you got a leak. You got to recharge the unit. It's 500 bucks. I don't have 500 bucks. But I pick up the phone, I call, hey, bank, I just made a $1,200 payment. Can I get $500 of that back, fix up the house, and then I'll make it up on the next payment? The bank says, because this is a one-directional loan, at no point does money ever come back to me. It only flows in one direction. So I borrow the money, I get one lump right off the bat, the $200,000 that went to the house. And then it's one direction. Got that? Let's compare that over here to my line of credit. So I have a line of credit. I have $15,000 line. I could max out the card, but as long as I'm making the minimum payment of my payment goes to the interest. 79%. 79% returns back to me at the available limit. 
revolving. So as I make a payment, yes, some of it goes to the bank, but some of it comes back to me. Which I'm using it. You see that? Revolving, that's what that means. We all understand simple interest. Right? Simple interest is we all learned it in school. It was in math. What is 21% of 100? If I have $100, what's 21%? Chris? 21. $21. You're absolutely right. You learned that. Now, tell me, what day in school did they teach you about amortized interest? <laughs> what was the class? Did anybody remember that day? The homework assignment that was involved? Anybody ever seen an amortization schedule? Anybody here have to pay a mortgage? Yeah. Amortization schedule. For those of you with weak constitutions, you may want to divert your eyes. This was something that was invented by Satan. I'm, I'm <laughs> All right, so you have interest, right? $950 of that $1,200 going to interest on the first payment. And then you have what's called principal, and that's $250 of that payment. Now, This is what's called your amortization schedule. Look at this little part. This is pretty cool. This is the 21 year mark. What do you think happens at year 21? Oh, by the way, you know your standard home mortgage is for 30 years, right? We all know that. So you're finally making as much principal and interest Yes. And so every payment after this, I pay more towards the principal than it is interest. But you see, for the first 21 years of this loan, I paid more in interest every month than I did principal. 250, but it's 6%. $950 of 1200 a $1,200 payment goes to interest. And that's 6%? I'm not a math wizard here, but if I were to use a calculator, I mean, that's closer to about 400%. I mean, think about it. The interest here is front-loaded. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a look at it this way. What happens at the five-year mark? Your average homeowner, five years, what? Five years. house, you move. We move all the time. Absolutely. What else happened? Yes. Fine. Same result. You move or you refi, it's the same result. A little a lot of equity built up at that point? No, hardly nothing. Uh, but you start over. Doug, you've been doing a great job. You're a champion. Rent mortgage payer. We love you. We feel you. You know what? I bet you that $1,200 a month kind of hurt a little bit. What if we refinanced you? We could get that payment down to thousand dollars a month again. Awesome, right? And, and everybody says yes. That's an extra two hundred dollars a month. Look, we're already living paycheck to paycheck. An extra two hundred dollars. We're going to find something irrelevant to spend it on, right? That's what we do as Americans. So if we're like, yes, let's refi, and then look at all this progress that we made, and then we were like, only had twenty five years left to get off. Now. We go right back to zero. We got a 30 years. It's going to take to pay that off. All for $200 a month. Was that worth it? I don't know. It's 6%. That's what they said. 6%. Hey, five years equals how many months? 60. Uh, That's right, CJ. 60 months. In 60 months, if you make all of your $1,200 a month payments. I'm going to round this, okay? But you're gonna pay $71,000. Slightly rounded down. Now, yeah, slightly rounded down, I said. $72,000 even, even, oh, okay. And I don't know, I was using like base <laughs> Thirteen thousand dollars is what's been paid down on the principal. Ouch. Okay, you see this? Fifty-nine thousand dollars. These are rounded. Okay. It's been paid in interest. 
That's six percent for us. You sure can, Andre. Credit where is at investorpro.org, man. Absolutely. Guys, that does not look like six percent. In fact, if you do the math, over the life of the loan, you will end up spending four hundred and thirty two thousand dollars. Two hundred thousand dollar balance with your starting point. In the end you pay four hundred and thirty two thousand. Is that six percent interest? In that time frame, your interest rate for that time frame is ten and a half percent. Isn't that awesome? You took out a two hundred thousand dollar loan, so divide two hundred into a fifty nine figure an interest rate of ten and a half five at that point. Well let me ask you a question though. Is there a way to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit? There's some mathematical formula out there. So if I plug in six degrees Celsius, it would then tell me what that is in Fahrenheit over here, right? So did you know that there's a way to convert from amortized interest into simple interest? Let me show you a little simple formula. All right, take your interest rate. You can write this down. And double it. What's six plus six? What? Well, that's right. Now multiply that by ten. You get one twenty. What do you think about one hundred and twenty percent interest? Now, the actual math, which is a very complicated formula, is actually one hundred and sixteen percent. But this is a simple formula that you can use to eyeball the, uh, the amortized interest rate and just get an idea, All right? So, let's go back to the beginning. You had that $8,000 pair, nice guy. I'm gonna lend you the $8,000, I'm gonna let you pick. Do you want it at- He's actually gonna go in with a car loan in a pit. 6% amortized. You see how just a little more knowledge you can make a better decision? That is great. Now, imagine, we, we're the, imagine I'm your, I'm your loan officer you know, we're sitting here, here I am. Well, Chris, you know, I talked to the underwriter, we got it all about wrapped up here, just one more, two more things, and we're all set. Um, I'm looking at paperwork, and it's like you've been approved for a 116% interest rate on your loan, congratulations. You would take 116% interest? No. No. You may 116% on your loan. You see, so here's what happened. CJ, come up here. Yes. So, here's what happened one day. When they saw nobody with it as that, hey, uh, this is my brain. Nobody here's taking these loans. I don't know what to do. Do you have any ideas? What are we going to do? Change the formula. Okay. So, let's call it 6% instead of 116%. But still charge them the 116. Boom. Go. Hey. They use cash as currency. Cash is currency. <laughs> for right? We, we all understand that, right? You see that here. This is what they do, right? But what do the wealthy do? All right? The wealthy, can spell correctly. The wealthy, what do they do? They use leverage as currency. C -R -R -C. I need a whiteboard with spell checker. Currency. <laughs> they use leverage as currency. Alright? And on top of that, what do they do with the cash? They use their cash as velocity. Now, if you're like me, when I saw this, I was like, hey, cash is currency, okay, I see that. Leverage is currency, okay. Cash is velocity, I'm like, what's that? What are you talking about? All right, what's currency? Let's define currency. What is currency? You gotta participate. It's an exchange. Teacher's pet. Get some of the other people's pet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Currency, we exchange that, it's our bartering system, it's how we purchase things. Is money a currency? Yes. Are there other currencies? Yes. Right? Is credit a currency? Yes. Absolutely. Right? What about uh, time? Does anybody ever trade time 
for money? Is that what a job is? Anybody ever trade knowledge for a currency? I know how to do something. You don't know how to do that. Well, pay me some money. And I'll do that. Right? Do we pay the tax person to do that because we don't understand the tax code? Right? So knowledge is a currency. What about relationships? It's not what you know, it's who you know. Are there relationships a capital? If you know the right person, can they hook you up? Yes. Absolutely. So there's a lot of different currencies out there. Whenever you use whatever the medium of that currency is, you're leveraging it. You're using it to your advantage. This is the banking system. If you understand how this banking system works, you can leverage it to your advantage. If you do not understand, agree? All right, so the wealthy know how this system works, so they use leverage for their currency. What are they leveraging? Are they leveraging? In fact, they're not to be confused what with I opium. Right? That is something totally different. Right? We're not talking about opium, we're talking about OPM. What is OPM? Other people's money. Loving it. Right? OPM. Other people's money. Right? Because remember, where does the money for these credit cards and these loans come from? The bank's lending pool. That's other people's money. Okay, so here's what it is. Instead of using my cash to pay my bills, if I'm wealthy, I'm using my lines of credit to pay my bills. I still have cash, but what do I actually use my cash for? I use my cash as velocity. The velocity is speed. The speed at which I pay down the debt that I'm leveraging. Let me put it to you this way. If I'm a billionaire and I have a billion dollars, do I spend my billion dollars? Or do I leverage a billion to get access to 10 billion and spend that 10 billion, but use my 1 billion to make the payments on the 10 billion? What do, what, if I'm wealthy, what do I do? The leverage. We use the leverage principle. You see that? So if the wealthy can do it with billions of dollars, we can do it with thousands. That's all it is. That's velocity banking. You guys with me? You want to see what velocity banking is now? Yes, sir. All right. So this is the, this is the whole whole system behind it. Velocity banking, five thousand dollars. What do we do with it? Well, before we're putting it in the checking account, but now what are we doing? We're putting it straight onto the credit card balance. All of it. Every penny. Every paycheck. Boom. Right on the line of credit. Now, when I saw that, by the way, when I was sitting where you guys were, I admit, it took me six times. And that, like, um, I saw this six times, and I did not get it. Because this is the point where they lost me. I'm like, but we just, I just started talking about velocity. Yeah, the very first step of velocity banking, you lost me. If I take all my income, and I put it onto my line of credit, how do we eat? As you can tell, eating, very important priority for me, <laughs> right? What are we going to do? I mean, how do we pay for things if all the money's gone? All right, I'm going to do my best to pretend as if I'm talking to me fast. So, I need to give myself a little bit of room here. All right, we'll move this. Good. Okay, so let's say I have a $15,000 limit on my card, right? right? And I'm carrying a $12,000 balance, right? You got to write so this far? down. Okay. So if I put $5,000 onto this line of credit, what happens to the amount? What happens to my... It goes down to 7000 It would go down to seven. From right. To it. What? There's 20% interest here. But hey, don't let this number fool you. Man, this looks like such a big number, doesn't it? 21%. Do you know that's APR? What's APR? Annual percentage. Come on, come on, don't teach that. Let's go. 1.75. 1.75. Now, if I put something on my credit card, and the interest I'm going to be charged on a monthly basis is only 1.75%, does that look a little bit more affordable than this 21% that they throw at me? Because this is supposed to make me go, ooh, 21%. That's, be careful with that. That's, 
it's like, what, what's 21%? 1.75 a month. On the 12,200. Nothing. Okay, and you've just made a five thousand dollar payment. You know what? No, if I put two thousand dollars onto a credit card at twenty one percent, you want to know what actually I'm paying? Just the interest only. Like, what all I have to cover in my minimum payment is really the interest, right? It's like fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. If I wanted to get access to something for two thousand dollars, it would only cost me. 50 bucks. Now that's just to rent the money, to rent the 2,000 bucks. I'm not making any headway on paying it down. But if I use that to buy like a big screen TV, I've done it all wrong. Because what is my big screen TV ever going to give me any money back? But if I purchase something of value that's going to bring me money in, then I just have to wait for that money to come in and then it pays for itself. That, that's called an asset. But we're not there yet. But if I put $5,000 onto my line of credit, do I have to budget for that minimum monthly payment here? No? So I don't have to budget for that $600. Well, where does that go? Cash flow. People are like, wait a minute. Yeah, I lost people here too. Wait a minute. Still no. They put that money, they put that payment out there based off of a carry balance from month to month, but I'm dropping $5,000. I've already exceeded the minimum payment. I don't have to budget for it. It's actually not going to be charged to me. Only, only the interest can buy. People don't realize that. They think the full 21% in that month is going to be charged to you. No, you're doing your math wrong. 1.75. Very inexpensive. Okay, so I don't need to budget for that anymore. So what happens? So my expenses, don't they go down by $600 here? Yeah. So now we're at $4,400. You see that? Total monthly expenses. So what's my cash flow now? 600 bucks. 600 bucks, baby. Better than nothing. Cash flow. That's where we were at before, right? Because we had a zero cash flow. All right. Now, you guys don't look like chumps. No, 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 no. You guys look very smart. In fact, you guys look like you're lightning light, and the, the light just came on. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to ask you again. Is it a good idea to put money into the savings account to let the banker use your money to go make money? Or do you think you can do a better job with your own money? You can do a better job. What about putting money away into the 401k or the IRA? Do we want to let the hedge fund manager make money off of our money, or can we do a better job on our own? So I don't need to set aside money in those investments that I don't even know how to do. Now, I'm not trying to talk you out of investing in the real estate, or investing in the stock market. I want you to invest in real estate, yes. Because think about real estate as an investment versus stock market. If you put money into the stock hey, market, Jordan. and you buy, uh, what's the Just hot, in hot time. stock? Let's say Google. Is that a hot stock? Is yes. The price going up? Yes. Right. What can you do as an individual to guarantee that the price Repetition of that stock is the mother up? of all learning. Right. Concept of investing in any asset: buy low, sell, keep sell clicking. hot. Right. So keep, keep clicking, and that guarantees <laughs> the, the the cost, of the price of the stock will go up. No, Doug <laughs> obviously should not be investing anywhere. In Just keep clicking on it. Do we all realize that there's nothing that I can do, that there's a whole CEO, board of directors, shareholders that have in market forces that are outside of my control? Uh, I mean, I'm so, okay. Now, let's say we take the same amount of money that we would have put in stocks and we go buy some real estate. What can you do as an individual tomorrow to guarantee the value of that house that you purchased goes up. What could you do to a house that would make sure, guarantee that the value increases? Put some work into it. Fix it up. Sure. Absolutely. What else? What else do you do? Um, what? Well, we could turn it into a rental, right? Could we? Could, could we raise the rent? It's already a rental. That's another way to make money. Could we turn it into a nightly rental? 
So there's a lot of ways that I can, in my own efforts, increase the value of a real estate deal. Now, market forces are still in play. There's a lot of things that I don't have control over. But I do have control over whether or not I upgrade that kitchen. I do have control over the force that I charge. Right? So I like that about real estate. It gives me some control. But what about another asset class? Uh, precious metals. Right? If I want to take a huge chunk of money and put it into precious metals, what I'm saying is I'm going to bet that the economy is going to tank. Right? And if the economy tanks, then the value of precious metals will go up, and then I will be, I'll be okay. Right? It, it's a hedge against the inflation. It's a hedge against down economies. That's why people buy precious metals. Now, to legally buy precious metals in the United States, you have to buy it at what's called the full market price, the spot price. Right? That's what it's worth today. So let's say gold's worth fifteen hundred bucks. Right? I think it's less than that, but let's just say. If I go to buy it, I have to pay how much for it? I have to pay fifteen hundred bucks for it, right? If I go over here and Doug and I have a little side exchange and say trade it for a thousand dollars, that's illegal. Now, why would that be illegal? Is that going to destabilize the gold price, the market? Yeah, they have regulations and laws in place to to. So because that is not, it's not a, it's not a fiat type of currency, it's a, it's a stable currency, you follow the law. So when you buy it, you have to fill out a tax document that shows what the spot price of that day was. When you sell it, you either sell it for capital gains or capital loss. Look, you didn't know you were going to purchase strings today. Now, let's compare that to real estate. Gold, I'd have to buy full market value. If the house here is valued at $200,000, does that mean I have to pay $200,000? No. Nope. Could I legally purchase this for $100,000? But I can't do that. That's free for you, Law. It's free. I can build in my own equity if I know what I'm doing, my market analysis with my negotiation. I have control. So I pitch real estate because it is the vehicle that gives you the most control. Not total control, we can never eliminate all risk, and I'm not saying we can, but if you can, as much risk as you can mitigate through investing in products that give you control, and then you can get educated on how to control it, then you're making some really safe investments. All right. So, if I don't have to account for this $1,400, that means to $3,000 a month, right? Because I'm not going to put money in my savings account. I'm not going to put money into the 401ks anymore because I'm going to do something better with it. But do you see my cash flow is now $2,000. Now, here's the beauty of velocity banking. Because there's so many strategies out there to pay down uh, things very, very fast. So you can make double payments. If we started here on day one and made double payments, we'd be done in 20, at, at year uh, 19. It would be done in 19 years. We would shave 11 years off of the total, the total, right? Just making double payments. <coughs> but you have to make double payments. That's pretty expensive, right? You'd have to get an extra job or something. Right? No one yeah. One way. There's a lot of other people who will say, well, no, scrimp and save and cut back on your lifestyle. Eat the beans and rice diet, you know. Don't, don't go see movies. Wait till they come out on TV. Right, frugal, and, and that is good to be frugal, but instead of having, you, you can't save your way to wealth. It just doesn't. You can't cut back enough, and then one day come out and you're wealthy. Right? You have to grow your finances. You have to grow your income. Right? So, just saving by itself is not an effective strategy to get out of it. So, we're going to show you a better way. We're going to start. The fact that I put $5,000 of my all my income on this line of credit, I've now completely changed my budget. Just by moving $5,000 onto my line of credit, I don't have to make those payments, and I don't need to, not to believe in that yet, but I'll show you, right, because you're like, where's my savings account? Where's my cushion? I'm going to show you, folks. Right, you with me? Okay, so 
I didn't get an extra job. I'm not working overtime. I'm not cutting back on my expenses. But by restructuring how I pay for things, I have $5,000 coming in, but only $3,000 in expenses, right? So if I put $5,000 here on the card and then put $3,000 of expenses there, right? What was the net pay down in one month? The net pay down, 2,000. So now I'm at 10,000. Okay, anything you do once, you can do twice, right? So next month, could I put another 5,000 on the card? And then, and then could I put 3,000 back on the card? You see how we're paying this off? Well, let's, uh, let's go back for a moment. See this $12,000 balance? At $600 a month, minimum monthly payments, Chris, how long is it gonna take me to pay off the $12,000 balance, making the minimum monthly payments $600? Yeah. Guess guess how many years? Hmm? Four. Typically thirty nine years is what they typically say on your statements. Yeah. Minimum. Minimum payments. Okay. And you get that that would take years and years and years, right, to do that. So here we are with velocity banking. Right? Right? I'm paying it down at two thousand dollars a month. My total balance. How many months until it's all paid off? Twelve thousand divided by two thousand. Mm -hmm. So it, I keep decreasing the balance by two thousand dollars every month. That's right. Six months, not years, not tens of years, but six months. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. So we've paid off the credit card balance in six months. Now, there's a couple, a few rules we have to follow. First of all, your line of credit is for emergencies. All right? Do we have an emergency today? Do we have an emergency? No. Praise the Lord. Thanks, Josh. All right, so then the second thing is for, is for debt, okay. debt pay down. Do you see that? We're using it for debt pay down. Okay, and the third thing we do if we don't have an emergency, we don't have any debt, then it's used for assets. Right? We just explained what assets were. Right? It's not for liabilities. If I want to buy a TV, if I want to if I wanted to buy a phone or something, some stuff, I want to go on a trip. Is that do I use my credit card here? No. <laughs> His heads are going in every direction. No. Anything that I want to do comes out of my cash flow. So if $2,000 a month is not enough for you to go on that dream vacation you wanted, then what do we need to do? Grow our cash flow. Yes. Now, if that's connected to a rewards <coughs> system, you could potentially get your vacation for free if you keep on utilizing your line of credit or your credit. Well, absolutely. If you if, if think about what's happening here with the line of credit, you're absolutely right. If Think about the rules of credit cards. If I have a $15,000 limit, should I be maxing out my limit? Or should I be staying under 50%? Does this help me get under 50%? Right. Now... To have a credit card actually impact my credit positively, I need to use it every month. The credit card is sitting you know, unused in your wallet or sitting in the safe or underneath the mattress or whatever, unused, does that help my credit in any way? But a credit card that I'm using every month creates what's called transactional history. So am I, is, that, is that something that's helping? Now, another principle with credit, if you pay it down more than what you put on it every month, that is a positive for your score. Is that happening here? Yes. So I'm bringing it under 50%. These are notes you should be writing down. Right? I'm bringing it under 50%. I'm using it every month, right? And I'm paying it down more than what I'm using it every month. This is going to improve my credit score. This is going to help my DTI. What's my DTI? Debt to income ratio. Six to 12 months. 
what's going to happen to me is I have the ability to either get my my credit uh, interest rate lowered or my limit increased, right? So, or both. Let's say we go up here and we're at twenty five k, right? Now, if I had a savings account and I saved ten thousand dollars, did it show up one day with this big, huge, like publisher's clearinghouse check and there's balloons and girls and everything and say, "Congratulations, you saved ten thousand dollars. Here's another ten thousand dollars." Anybody bank at that bank? No. No, no bank does it. But if you use their lines of credit, <laughs> this banking product, the right way, are they going to give you access to ten thousand more of OPM? Yes. Yeah. It's better than now. Time. Uh, remember, there's three things that makes velocity banking work. First one is what? Debt. But I just paid this off. Uh oh. It's you need debt. Well, not on this card, I don't. So I gotta, I gotta move some of that debt over to here. That's right. Okay. So how do we do that? Very well, carefully. Well, we, we make the fan fall down and then we break <laughs> it. Step two. Are you taking notes? <laughs> All right. So here's what we do. So now that we have this limit increase, what's half of twenty-five? Twelve point five. Twelve and a half. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put thirteen thousand dollars. On, on this credit card, right? It's going to be a principal only payment on my mortgage. Okay? A number of ways to do that. Is it ideal to do that on a line of credit or a credit card? Line of credit, right? Because I'll at least get it at the interest rate. Or run. But let's say I had to pull that out as a, a cash advance. And I'm going to get charged 25, 30%, let's say 30% interest. But let's compare that to 116 percent interest. <laughs> is still it winning. okay You're if still I winning. had to pull this out even at a cash advance? Yes. Am I still doing okay? Yes. All right. But I'm going to work my numbers based off of the 21 percent simple interest rate. All right. But if I pull 13,000 out and make principal only payment, very important. What what kind of payment? Principal, principal only. only. If you just send in 13,000 dollars, what's the bank going to do? Apply it to like. All the payments. Yeah. They'll be 10 months off of not having to make payments. Well, Woohoo! Actually, they'll apply to the payments, but that includes with the interest. So then you're just paying ahead. Yeah. Then really doing nope. Right, so we want to make, uh, we want to make a $13,000 month payment, but that's yeah. more than 50%. But what's happening in the very first month? Go down. I'm bringing it down by 2,000, so you see how I'm under 50% right in the first 30 days. So I'm, I'm obeying my principles, right? And then I'm just, if it took me six months to pay off 12, how long is it going to take me to pay off 13? Six and a half. Did yeah, you guys see that? Six and a half. Six and a half months. Now, I'll let you know, at 21% interest, the APR that you would charge yourself for six and a half months, your interest pays would be one thousand four hundred and forty dollars. All right, so the bank's still going to make some money off of you. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. Well, let's compare. It but it took me sixty months over here to pay down thirteen thousand dollars on the principal. Sixty months. How many months did it take me to pay down thirteen thousand over here? It costs fifty-nine thousand dollars in interest over that sixty months. How much did it cost over here? Fourteen hundred bucks. A little over fourteen hundred bucks. So, not only is it faster, but do you see that it's cheaper? Yes. That's the power of velocity, man. Power. Now, what would happen here if I? Drop the 13k. You see that I just got my DeLorean and I traveled back to the future, right? right? And when I did that, I skipped over all that interest. Do I have to pay that? Do I have to pay the $59,000 of interest? No, that's interest saved, 
Right? What did Benjamin Franklin say? Fifty-nine thousand dollars in interest saved is fifty-nine thousand dollars interest earned. earned. <laughs> <laughs> I think he said a penny saved, a penny earned. But to get the principal, right? I don't have to pay that. And then in six and a half months, what can I do again? Can I get another thirteen and make another principal-only payment? Can I do that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. In fact. Following this model, allotting for the fact that, you know, sometimes small emergencies happen. Like, let's say emergency happens. Is it possible you could have a five-year-old kid named Shepard lose his baseball up on the roof and without telling anybody, climbs up on the roof to go get it? And then you're like, where's my five-year-old? And you hear something, what is it? And that's a five-year-old up on the roof. <laughs> is that possible? Do, do things like that happen? <laughs> right now, let's say he's, a, he's clumsy and he falls off, which didn't happen, but let's say it happened. Breaks his arm. Of course, I'm out real estate investing, so the babysitter's like, whoo! <laughs> calls, calls 911, right? The ambulance comes, takes him to the hospital. Insurance covers how much? 100%? 120%? No, only if you start a you know, HSA. We'll show you how to do that later. But covers 80%, right? So I got to fork up 20%. Well, it just so happens that that comes out to be about, say, $2,000. How in the world am I going to afford, because I put all my money onto this credit card, how could I afford a $2,000 hospital bill? Well, how am I going to pay that? How? Tell me how. With my credit card. Oh, so my credit line on the credit card is not only my checking account, but it's also my savings account. Because I'm only going to dip into that other 50% if there's an emergency. Ooh, that's cool. I like that. Okay, so if I factor all of that in and I'm doing my velocity banking, the entire house, most of the house is paid off. Hey, Greg, five, give me your numbers. I'll show you how to do it. CreditWizMrPro.org. In five years, I got this far. Paid down 13000 and paid all that interest. Now, I pay off the rest of the house, and I save over $100,000. $111,000 in interest is what they save yeah. over, the, over that course. Is that good or good? It's good. Really good. Did I get an extra job? Am I making double payments? Working overtime? Did we have to cut back and sell off one of the kids because they were too expensive? No, we didn't have to do that. We got to keep them. Right? We got to keep our lifestyle in place. At no point did I ever touch the lifestyle. But along the way, could we eliminate the, the auto got loan? It. Yeah, we could eliminate the auto loan. What if I wanted to buy a $26,000 car? Can have that paid off in a, a year. See that? Yeah. So, I mean, velocity banking is a tool that allows you to eliminate your debt at record fee because your cash, your actual income you come in, pays down. You, you now pay for things with leverage, with a line of credit. Now, these numbers might not match your numbers, but who here has one of these things? Smart or dumb, but you have one. One of you, one of you guys have this, right? <laughs> right. Pull them out. Come on. Oh, this yeah. is an app, right? Now. Yeah. iPhone or Samsung. Your iPhone's out. We go to your your yeah. Apple your App Store. App Go to Google. Go to type in Renatus. Renatus. Velocity banking. Look, here's what it looks you like. You guys can do this at home as well. Of a phoenix. All it is the bird. Yeah, that's it. Velocity banking. Now, here's what it is. It's a calculator. The information you put in there just stays on your phone. Read the, uh, through the terms of agreement. You'll see that. You plug in your own numbers so you can figure out what are your loan amounts, what are your expenses. And it will give you a graph and show you you start implementing velocity banking, how soon you can be on it. Is that cool or cool? Cool. Guys, that's velocity banking. Now, 
once you've eliminated all of your debt, right? You could be, in this example up here, you eliminate all of your debt in about seven years. All of it. House, loan, auto, credit cards, it's gone. Now, what could we do with a $200,000 house that we own free and clear? What could be done? Well, we live in this house. But could I get a home equity line of credit? <laughs> yes. What do you think my credit score is going to be like? After Hashtag making, HELOC. You know, five years of these payments, right? My debt to income ratio, excellent. Everything's good. You know, of a uh, federal credit union that could get you 90% LTE. I should do. Yeah, we do. Shout out to Navy Federal Credit Union. Because <laughs> you do that. I know, I know how you work. All right. 90% loan to value. So let's say the house is valued at $220,000. And I can get a 90% EWOC. What's, what is that? $200,000. Doesn't that give me access to 200 k Yeah. $200,000 in a home equity line of credit. Let's check your understanding today, folks. Right? We're checking for understanding. Is that simple interest or amortized interest? That's simple interest. Is it a one directional loan or is it a revolving line of credit? Oh my goodness. Now, is this a credit card or is it a line of credit? Line of credit. Oh my goodness. You don't put a card. Beautiful. Do you not understand here? $200,000, mm. right? I could pull out two hundred thousand dollars. So, what could you buy for two hundred thousand for investment property? Do I have to spend all two hundred thousand dollars on investment property. Do you know that in, you the, in the room, in this office right here, but just over there, they're learning how to do things like uh, contract for deed, subject to. They're learning how to do options. They're learning how to do what's called all inclusive trust deeds wraps. Right? These are these are strategies that you can take control of property with the keeping the existing debt in place. Seller finance notes. You guys, here's what I'm saying. Twenty thousand dollars if leveraged correctly, if you have the knowledge, could get you into right now they all have debt on them, right? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Each house we had to put about twenty thousand into. All right. Twenty thousand. Easy. Right. But that got us into the house, taking over the payments, putting some tenants in there, put some paint, some carpet, change some fixtures. Now we're collecting some rent payments, mm -hmm. and that could vary. Maybe you're cash flowing them after you, because every every debt on the property is going to be different. Maybe you're cash flowing a hundred, maybe four hundred dollars a month. But you got ten of these things. Let's say that's adding an extra. Let's say it adds an extra four thousand dollars to the income, right? I mean, now think about velocity banking. What is the speed at which I can pay down debt? Does it just increase to like seven, eight thousand dollars now? So I've taken on a whole lot of debt, right? But with with what I have here and the rental income coming in, can that not be swept down fast? Now, if you do the numbers, it takes like 15 years to pay all that off. 15 years. Or another way, what if in just say we take another three years? In three years, we've eliminated either completely the debt on one house or we kind of shaved off about 25% of all the debt on these houses. We don't know where they're at. They might all be in different places. But as you look at your houses, finding where they're at in total amount earned, you're applying your velocity banking principles, putting every month an extra $7,000 on the principal on these for three years. For three years, folks, sell off five pay off the other five, right? So it doesn't take me 15 years, right? Now I own these five rental properties and I still own my own house, right? Free and clear, right? Now that, with the average amount of money that's coming in on rent, 
I don't have to work at my job anymore. I just replaced the income. But if I love my job and want to keep working there, great. I've just now doubled my income. Either way. But now I own these five houses free and clear. This is just one of many strategies. You don't have to do it this way. But Katrina rentals, nightly rentals, I can get it uh, multifamily. But if I got if I got a HELOC on this house, you can't get a HELOC on these. But can I get what's called a non Recourse, Give me your numbers, true story. Credit whiz at investorpro.org. I'll show you how. What's the loan value on one of those? Oh, 50%. So that's 200, 200, 200, 200, 200. Right? I just add half a million dollars if I got NRCLs on all of them. What can I do with 500 from there, 200 from my original HELOC? If I had $700,000 available to me in lines of credit, lines of credit, do you think you could do, I don't know, one deal? Just do a lot, yeah. You guys see the power? And it started with velocity banking. What was that? Wow. Guys, that's it. I'm done with you. There's 50, I got done 15 minutes early. Now, you guys are welcome to go. For those who want to stay and see how far the rabbit hole goes down, more than welcome to. I'm going to show how to do velocity banking with another strategy called business credit. But at this point, velocity banking is done. And if your brain matter is somewhere on the floor and you just want to pick it up and go, you can go and come back next week and learn about this, right? Only so much that the brain can handle. This but for those is going to be advanced around, velocity banking those coming on up. YouTube who want to stick around and see. Velocity banking with business credit. I'm going to continue for another 15 minutes. Good? So, those who want to leave, you may leave. And those who want to stay, may stay. But be warned, there's no going back. <laughs> Looks like I have people staying for another 15 minutes. All right? Stay here on risk. All the same, uh, all the same uh, warnings still apply, right? You need to do your own due diligence on all this. Okay, so we talked about the three components for doing velocity banking. What are they, Chris? You remember? What are all three? Uh, income. Okay, so how many people, how many of my clients come to me and they have debt? What percentage? Probably all of them. Yep, hundred percent. What percentage of my clients come to me with debt and they also have income? Pretty much. Yeah. What percentage of my clients come to me with debt and income? but don't have a line of credit or don't have a line of credit that they can use. Pretty much 100%. <laughs> that's, that's where, I'm sorry, but that's where most people are at. Now, let me tell you, this is a story about a friend of mine. His name is Max. Sad Max. Max. Why is he mad? Why is he called Max? Because he's maxed out. Right? <laughs> this, these are his finances or something similar to it, right? Totally maxed out. He's got a house. He's even got equity in his house. But what good is equity in your house if your credit score, right? Your, cre your credit score, what if your credit score is in the negative? I mean, you didn't even know. Like, this credit score is. 300 to 850, and you've got a negative 850. <laughs> well, that's max, right? Is DTI, right? DTI, debt to income ratio, right? Let's just call that 200%. Right? It only calculates up to 100%, but he's maxed out. He's beyond that, right? And then what about utilization? Utilization. Utilization. Where's his utilization? Yeah, he's maxed out. So, here's the deal. He's, he's totally maxed out on his cards, so he can't use them. Right? He has very little to use. Or, a long time ago, he got cut off. They said, uh-uh, we ain't giving you anymore. You're done. Right? That's Max. I know you guys can't relate to this, but I get Max. Max comes into my office every day. So we're looking at Max in this situation here, and well, that's that's not good. And so Max sees velocity banking, 
And he's like, you know what? My wife and I, we actually have credit cards. And we were just talking about Max. My friend Max. Hi, Pam. Hi. Everybody, this is Pam McCants, one of the leaders of the team here. Thanks for coming in. She just makes, she just spot checks to make sure that, uh, that I'm being accurate. Okay, Joseph and <laughs> So here's Max. Hi, Max. Max is maxed out. That's why he's called Max. See, his credit score is way low. His debt to income ratio is way high. His utilization too high. He's got a house, but what good is equity if this is your, the state of your finances? Will the bank allow you to access your equity? No. Doesn't matter. If these are your finances, I mean, it, it's, a, it's as if you don't even have any equity. It's like anybody talks about your equity, it feels like an insult, a punch in the gut every time you hear it. That's Max. And so he's like, I want to try the velocity banking. So he's thinking to himself, well, him and his wife, they got some credit cards. So let's take this 15000 here, right? We talked about that limit. Let's say that's on three different credit cards, right? And it's balanced out evenly. So it's five, five, and five. You guys follow me so far? So here's one of his credit cards. You know, it's everywhere you want to be, everywhere you want to go. That's right. So he's got this card here, and it's got a limit of five thousand dollars. You see that? Mm -hmm. Right. Now he's carrying this twelve thousand dollar balance. Right. You see that? So if that's spread out evenly on all three cards. That would mean that this card is carrying a four thousand dollar balance. Picking up what I'm laying down so far. Okay, so here's the deal. Max, how long has Max been maxed out? Max has been maxed out for at least two years or more. All right? He has been at 80% or more on his utilization for over two years. So the day comes and he, remember I gave you the warning at the start, right? Velocity banking is the one. Lines of credit. Lines of credit. Right? Now, it can't work with credit cards. You've got to be very careful. In this situation, let's look what happens. So, Max comes along, right? And he's got himself, remember his income. He was paying attention to Joseph as he listened. And he said, oh, I've got my $5,000 income. I'm going to put it right here on my credit card. Right? So what happens to a $4,000 balance? Put $4,000 down on the card. It goes to zero. It goes to zero. Happy days, right? Happy Good days game. are here at last. Right. Oh, but what happens to the limit? You're like, oh, what the? I just paid off 4000 and I wanted to do velocity banking because I thought I'd still have that whole spread open to me. But the, the bank dropped my limit. This velocity banking sucks. This doesn't work. That Joey, he's full of beep. Right? <laughs> like it hasn't been said before. <laughs> Right? So, this is, this, is, this is what happens if you've been maxed out for a long time, your utilization has been super high. Does the bank think you're credit worthy? The moment you give them the chance to lower your limit, they're going to. Now, on a line of credit, true story. Do that? What's your spread? No, What's the difference out? between you your income and expenses? Cash. I'll show you how you can pay that off fast. Now, credit cards. They get the, the, when you sign those papers, if you ever read the, the big print giveth and the small print taketh away. This is called the small print taketh away right here. Okay? So, what's Max going to do? Well, Max, he loves this whole Renatus stuff that's going on here. And he wants to start his own real estate investing business. This is the storefront. All right. I'm sorry. You guys... This, you get what you pay for. How much money did you put in to my drawings? Right? <laughs> I, there's no money in the drawing fund here, so this is the drawing you get. This is your business, okay? Now, now the problem, Max would love to start a business, but 90% of all businesses fail in the first five years. Why? What are the three reasons businesses fail? Not enough capital. <laughs> That's right, number one, cash flow, right? If there's no money coming in, how do you pay bills? Number two, credit. If you don't even have any liquidity, how are you supposed to, right? It takes money to make money, this business can't even, doesn't have anything. And then third, collateral. collateral. Right? Businesses, right, we collateralize everything. 
If you own the building, you collateralize the building. If you own the inventory, the purchase orders, whatever it is, you can collateralize them. So business, businesses that have these three things are part of that 10% that succeed and move on. What does Renatus teach? Does Renatus teach you how to increase your cash flow? Yes. Does it teach you how to build your credit, personal and business? Yes. Does it teach you how to get a whole heck of a lot of collateral? <laughs> yes. All right. So yeah, so Max, he's been here. He's like, yeah, I want to do this. Awesome. I want to start a business, but I can't do it because we don't have this thing. So what, is, what does he need to do? Well, he needs to build himself some business credit. Now, if you realize that business credit is a class taught in the Renatus education, and you can take it and really learn how to build, here's what the class will teach you, how to build in six to 12 months. That's possible. But I mean, they don't, they don't put the months to get it done as a business startup within a year. That is possible to achieve $50,000. Now, those lines of credit come in <coughs> vendor credit, store revolving credit, fleet credit, like fuel cards, and there's a portion of that that's high on the credit cards. Of the 50K, $25,000 of that would be in unsecured cash credit cards. Not bad for a business that needs to get access to some credit, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's just access to credit. To have business credit to fulfill this, we have to establish a, transa a transactional history, a record of making on-time payments. Right? So this is just sort of like, this is just getting out of the starting gates. Now, Max, to do philosophy banking, needs to start a business because he has no access to a line of credit that he can use. So here's what we're talking about. Here's the strategy. And you need to have a good team in place to execute this. But here's what Max is going to do. He's going to take this twenty-five thousand dollars and he's going to bring it right Fidelity up here to the house. Fidelity bond Every title house. company. He's got the I love them. In it, but he didn't have the financials to take care of it. So what's he going to do? He's going to give himself his own HELOC. He's going to give himself his own HELOC. I call it a B HELOC. Your business <laughs> is giving you a HELOC, right? You're taking your twenty-five thousand dollars in credit cards and extending them to your business as like a loan, but how would we do that? That's weird. Well, it's because we're gonna to need to use a third party here, a title company, because we're not just we're not just taking money from the left hand and putting it in the right hand. That would be a no no, that doesn't work. What we would do is you need to do a private mortgage note and put a lien on the property Right, second position, filed with the county, recorded, everything's legitimate. Now, for payment on said you know, loan or the HELOC, right? The payment might come in your terms. So when you get this $25,000 in unsecured lines of credit for your business, it comes at 0% interest for anywhere from six all the way up to 24 months. So in this example, let's assume 24 months of 0% interest. The monthly payment will be calculated based off of 2% of the total amount used. Let's say because we don't worry about utilization on the business credit side, we're gonna use all 25. That would mean that we have a minimum payment of $500. $500 would be the minimum that needs to be paid to these business lines of credit. So, here's Max, he's not going to take that $5,000 and pay that credit card anymore, no. He's gonna put the $5,000 towards his private mortgage note, right? The title company is gonna take that and as they, and they subtract their fees, $4,950 comes back to the business, all right? Now, what happens here? What does Max do with that? As 25K, he's loaded up. Can he, with 25K, can he put his whole car on there? Can he put all of his credit card debt? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, yes. he can put all of that, right? Once he does that, 
what happens to this debt to income ratio? Does that go down? Yes, Absolutely. with the business. What happens to this utilization? Does that go down? Right? Now, as we look at what's going to happen, the payments, though, on this line of credit, the payments, this 4950 that's what applies towards every month, right? Now, here's where the tricky part, and this is where you need to have a good payment processor, whether you set it up through the private company or you get a third-party online payment processor, but you have to process the payment. So the payment comes in, but you're treating it like a line of credit. You're reporting it, at the accounting, like a line of credit. So as he uses the $25,000, payment goes down. Payment is recorded as, as lowering, just like we would over here, remember? But he then uses the card, again, for his $3,000 of expenses, right? So that is recorded. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. In fact, to pay off, pay off the car, right? It's going to take 11 months. 11 months, and the car and the credit cards are all paid off. But remember, we have two years on this line. We can take out another $25,000 off of this home mortgage, and all of that is done in 21 months. But I can just do another. 25 at that point, and then that's done. So now we've got even more equity in the home. And so what's that do to the, by the way, this, there is no direct transactional history that is growing the business credit score, but just the fact that these lines of credit have been lowered is going to increase the credit score. Yes. So that loan from the business that becomes, when, when you make the payment, or Max made the payment to the title company, the title company processed it, it went back to the business as revenue or income. It's <coughs> revenue, but not income. All right, now, let's for bank records to look at this, see if you're lendable, they'll lend off of that. Now, for your P&Ls, for your, um, right? So really, the only thing that's going to show up is, oh, by the way, the interest rate, by the way, that you've calculated that you're going to actually charge over this period of time is 21% interest. I forgot to mention that, by the way. So that is the actual income on a P&L or, or, uh, or a tax return that you will really pay taxes on, right? But the, you know, depending on how the lenders want to look at it, there is cash flow. There's there's revenue flowing into this business. <coughs> Do we have transactional, monthly transactional history that's going to grow my lines of credit? In two years, I'm going to be at two hundred thousand dollars if I follow the rules here of growing this line of credit because I'm using it every month. I'm paying it down more than I use it every month. You see that? This is going to be great, and I'm going to continuously get more and more offers on the business side to add more credit card stuff. Now, so I'm growing my business credit, and do you see that I have collateral, and I have an equitable interest in, the, in this house? So I have collateral. And as I grow my lines of credit, can I do this again and again? Can Max have, as he gets into the Renatus education, can he have other rental properties that, if he doesn't qualify for a HELOC or a, or you know, we talked about a non-recourse collateral loan. If you can't get that, could his business extend it? Sure, it can. And so his business gave Max that third component that he needed, the line of credit, so that he could do velocity banking. Now that his credit score is up, debt to income is down, he started to use his three credit cards that got shrunk down to 1,000 each. He made sure to use them, and so he's growing them. So at the end of two years, where's Max credit score at? Right. It's where it needs to be. Debt to income ratio, where's that at? Down. Utilization. So Max now can come over here, he can complete the loop and give his business a personal guarantee. That's like co-signing for a loan. So as the business could go out and get two hundred thousand dollars in loans and credit, Max's personal guarantee 
adds another $200,000 in lines of credit with the personal guarantee. Or he doesn't have to do it with lines of credit, credit cards. They could go out and apply for a commercial real estate loan, but they could do it together. It's all max, but it's max. It's max with the social security number, and it's max over here with the EIN number. So by using business credit to fuel the velocity banking, you have increased the velocity banking speed. You fueled it, right? The light just went on. Right? <laughs> someone just someone just got it. Right? And then at the same time, do you see how you're growing your business financials? Yes. Right? This is helping your business to succeed. This business is more lendable. So can I mean a lot of people come to say, well, I'll start business credit when I get the velocity banking under control. Or someone's like, I get it also. Well I want to get started with some business credit and once I build some then I'll start velocity banking. No, 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 you're missing out. Both combined make each one even better when done at the same time. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Have I, did you find a reason to come back next week? Did you find? The person who introduced you to the Renatus education system is ready to show you how you can get started with this. Use the app I gave you. Plug your numbers in. Do velocity banking. If you're like, I'm going to get into real estate, you got to get educated. This is not something, by the way, this business credit stuff over here, this is advanced 700 level stuff, okay? Like you have got to have the right team in place. You've got to have uh, an attorney. You've got to have a title escrow officer. You've got to have an accountant. You've got to make sure that everything is done right. It's a very complicated strategy, but it's doable if you're educated, if you know what you're doing. Folks, don't sit on the sideline. I've just shown you how to eliminate all of your debt. Do is to go home and go, that was nice. Well, that's interesting. What's on Netflix? Don't do that. Don't be that person <laughs> in your life. Do not leave this, well, you can leave this office this room, but don't leave here until you spoke with the person that brought you and said, you've got to show me how I can get started doing this. Don't leave until you've done that. And when you have, when you get started with us, you're going to start operating your life at a tempo you have not ever experienced before. And you're going to achieve your success, everybody on their own timetables, but you're going to start living life as a real estate investor, a business owner, and you're going to, in my opinion, be living the high life. I challenge you all, come on back, come join us in the high life. Thanks for being here tonight. All God right. bless. Be safe. Awesome. Well, now, folks, for those that had questions about how do I implement this, CreditWiz at InvestorPro.org. Okay, C-R-E-D-I-T W-I-Z at InvestorPro.org. As a matter of fact, let me. <laughs> I, I was not on the last No, no. <laughs> that's perfect. You do a good impersonation. Oh, that's good. This is amazing. Yeah, hey, I'm with you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I didn't know that. Yeah. Did you come through there? Oh, yeah. Oh, hey. well, I was coming up there. I was coming in front of the classroom. Oh, man. Thank I wish I would have come. That would have been better, huh? <laughs> 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 oh, well. I really don't like it. There's a lot of things parts to that. So. We'll see. There is tons. Yeah. I tell you what, that's why if it's, uh, that's why it's, some of it's you, and you know what I'm talking about, true story, about whether it's Gregory yeah. Brown, yeah. More, Long, more minds than mine, uh, have, uh, Jesus, to put Michael, yeah. Dwayne, but if to, you have to any to questions, now is the time, okay? Let me go ahead and erase some of the whiteboard so I can just go ahead and demonstrate how to, like, true story, how do you pay off, right? 80000 worth of student loans with $30,000 of income, and I'm going to do this live. give people the opportunity to okay. leave if their brain is Show me right. your line of credit or your credit card, true story. Okay, your limit, I mean. 
what's your limit of your line of credit or your bank credit card? Line on a business. All right. And then, what are your expenses? Income minus expenses is called your spread. That's what you'll leave inside of your line of credit. Okay, and that is what will pay down your student loans in a massive way. So give me those numbers. Income, a month, right? Uh, well, you, you already can, did you that, right? Thirty thousand dollars in income, so I'm going to divide it up. Now, Thirty banks are uh, divided lenders. by twelve. We have secondary okay, lenders. That's how I'm going to divide it up. Based off of your your expenses. I need so that. Okay, in, so I need your expenses. Talking. True story. And I need the limits on your line no, 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 of credit. You were all, about of them. Bank, like all of them. All of them. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. You can get yeah. bank state Absolutely. loans, PNL loans. You can get cash loans. Because the bottom line is, folks. If on a month, when you on don't a know basis, or records, you're hanging around you folks that, that don't know how to utilize what's been given to them as far as the banking month, tools then, that then are you can get, uh, gratuitously like 30 shed upon us, then you're just going to live like everybody else. Right? So, so what I want you to do is make sure you can get a that you're utilizing the tools loan that the banks have given to us. That gives you that Does that make sense? Liquidity. Because if you were running your business at 10,000 in 10,000 out, you come across now that extra 3, episodes, we're giving you tons of value. There's actually a man that said, hey, CJ, I'm calling the Velocity Banking like, Method. So I just I have got $50,000 in, in personal credit I could, I could make another And there was a man today that stopped me. That said, like, CJ, because of the Velocity Banking Method. This was in person. <laughs> I could just pay off that first Here, right? In Arizona. He said, man, I just paid off because of your video. I just paid off two credit cards. Here is my and deed now of I'm going to show you true story first live how to pay off that student loan, man. And uh, I want you to let me know when that student loan is paid off. All right, come on, give me that information. Now maybe you left already. Maybe you're shy. That's all right. I'm not going to push anyone. Okay, no judgment at all. What I want you to do is I want you to look at the board right now. Okay, because I'm going to. Put my email on there because I want to help. Okay, yeah, credit no, no, at investorpro.org. I'm going to write it on the board here. Thank okay? you, Hold on. Shouldn't this be on a t shirt? Shouldn't this be on a t shirt? It sure should, too. Okay, well, my brain's going to process it a little bit more. Of course. You take it, I mean, because I look at it like this is my brain. And mind you, you know, before, you know, I. Have a different, totally different type of business, you know, inventory and vehicles and you know history. So I look at this as like on the marketing side. What what is there to lend? Well, what I think would be really good, Pam, is if you and I could have um, some kind of meeting on a non-monotonous event night, so that so that I could uh, kind of show you. More as to what we do and kind of go over credit with and investor pro.org. Not only credit suite right? products, but uh, wise guys and ties who like resells yeah. the credit suite products. How we can get those to you at this if you want yeah. that kind of stuff. But I'm we, definitely interested in talking to that guy. But I can't do that at an anonymous function. I know. I know. <laughs> okay, and that's the really scary thing. And I, I love Bob Snyder, and I respect him. I'm not going to do anything to tarnish the brand. And so, but I mean, I know you know that. But there are people within the office here who are concerned about my integrity, who think that I am like somehow leading, yeah, like I'm the Pied Piper, leading the bank, leading people astray. So I don't oh, do I that don't here. Feel bad at all Fifteen thousand, man. Let me tell you something, man. Nothing to it, but to do it. You see what I'm saying? Look, look. There is nothing to it, but to do it. I remember being lifted 10,000. 10,000 above the credit limit. So I have no doubt in my mind. You have 730. Keep in mind, right? Debt to income. 
Remember, the bank is there to make money, all right? All right, so keep that in mind as well. What I want you to do is this. Shop around, man. Uh, shop around to different banks. Okay. Shop around to different banks. I know PinFed, Capital One, Navy Federal Credit Union, I could definitely vouch for them. They're amazing banks. Uh, other than that, though, man, what I would um, recommend to you is to shop around. You know, see if you can go in, talk to one of the personal bankers there. Have them look at, okay, your credit score, 730. Excellent. Okay, good job. Hey, without, without hard pulling, I want to see the, okay, absolutely. I want to see the probability of me getting a $15,000 credit limit from $5,000. Now, you can say, hey, I'm using this for, maybe you're using it for school, uh, maybe you're using it for a business, maybe you're using it. The bottom line is the bank has to profit from it, right? So say something, okay, that will allow the bank to say, oh, okay, well, you know what, he's going to use it anyway for, you know, our interests anyway. So, and he has a good track record, so let's go ahead and give him that increase okay now at the same time you can also ask hey is it okay if i ask for a lower interest rate and a higher credit limit i mean why not and then say listen i want i want to go back to school and i want to utilize this card for it or say hey i want to go and i want to build uh just say something low risk man like because you have a good reputation with the bank already all right period and so when you say things like that very, very likely that their credit card will increase in limit. Okay? Folks, CreditWiz at InvestorPro.org. Let me write it on the board over here. Okay? And I know you guys got to go, man. I got to make sure that True Story is emailing me so that I can help him pay those student loans down. I helped a lot of people pay down a lot of stuff. And guys, how much have you gotten charged? You know? You know, if you run across this video, how much have you gotten charged for the money that I put in your bank account? Think about that. Because there comes a time where you got to give back. I mean, you got so much that it's like, man, let me go ahead and give some of this back. And that's what I'm doing. We are adding value to your life. Now, I don't know if you can see that. But it's creditwiz at investorpro.org. All right? All right? Boom. There it is. All right, folks. Listen, I'm going to get on out of here. If you have any questions, creditwiz at investorpro.org. Hope you enjoyed this evening. You know I'm open for questions. God bless you. And have a great night.